Hey everybody, it's Carrie here. Happy Monday. It's uh, a great day. It's spring and it's a great time to talk about my five secrets to help you get fit, even if you are a busy, busy mom. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Carrie Adam. I am a physiotherapist. I'm a holistic living and I'm a postnatal run coach. Um, I love transforming busy, crazy, chaotic moms who keep putting off their running, keep putting off their fitness, and I love transforming and helping empower them with the skills they need to prioritize themselves, to take care of themselves, and to get back up and running safe and strong in all the craziness of being a mom in a new body that needs some love, attention, and uh, special instructions on how to run after. So I wanna to talk to you guys today about um, five secrets to getting fit because I know everybody wants to feel good, feel strong, feel energized, feel confident in their body and that is what I'm here to help you guys do using some real life strategies and my top five secrets. Um, and you know, you don't need more information. The, the internet is full of information to achieve your goals. All the experts are actually gonna tell you the same thing. None of this stuff is rocket science. Um, you can probably generate a list of 10 things that you can do right now, but the truth is that we struggle. It's in that action phase that we struggle, and that's why I have the Running Moms Training Academy. I take all the information I'm about to share with you, and I give it to you guys in bite-sized pieces, and I get you to take action week over week over week, so that when you look back in three months, and six months, and a year, you're seeing the changes, you're feeling the changes, but know that it doesn't happen overnight. It happens when we take consistent, persistent, patient action and we learn to meet ourselves where we're at. So just letting you know that I do have a VIP Running Moms Training Academy and I'll talk about that at the end of this video if you wanna join because it is open from now until Wednesday to get into training with us and with me to coach you through so that you take action. So you're in the right place right now if you are struggling with motivation to run. If you're frustrated and stuck in a running or weight loss plateau, if you're having trouble getting started, if you, if you wanna know the exact strategies that are gonna help you gain confidence, get strong, and bust you out of whatever plateau you might be stuck in. And I have a private group and I ask them, um, a lot of new runners in there, a lot of new women in my community, and I ask them, how happy are you with your health on a scale of zero to 10? So many people were under five, lots in that one to two range, and that makes me feel really, really sad. It makes me really, really want to get my message out there that we need to be taking care of ourselves, mamas, because when we are strong physically, we are strong emotionally when we move, when we take care of our health, and when we're runners, learning to run and focusing on that running and what it takes to get fit and strong is going to be what makes us feel better. So if you're feeling any of those things and you're unhappy in your health right now, Keep listening to the end of this video, um, and I also have some bonuses at the end that I really want to share with you so that you can get into training with us and, and really set yourself up for success in this training program. So I'm going to teach you some, some tips today. We're going to learn why diets, gimmicks, restrictions, expensive products don't work, and that's actually not what you need. Um, we're going to discover what strategic workouts are best for runners uh, to build muscle for faster miles to rev up your metabolism, to burn calories naturally, uh, even after you're done working out. We're gonna talk about the sample nutritional strategies and guidance you can easily incorporate into your daily busy life to curb sugar cravings without deprivation, diets, or gimmicks. We're gonna talk about how stress and sleep issues can be sabotaging even your best efforts if you're stuck in a plateau. We need to be looking at stress and sleep and why how they affect your immunity, your performance, and your ability to burn fat. And we're gonna uncover my secret to taking consistent action to achieve your goals and how this one thing will create more freedom and time in your life to get everything done. And I have a bonus tip that cannot be skipped. Um, it is the one thing you must work on before any of the above strategies are going to be helpful for you and achieving, achieving your goals and feeling better in your health. So stick around for the end for that bonus and then the bonus, the bonuses that are included um, if you want to get up and running with the Running Moms Training Academy. Um, so number one, why diets, gimmicks, restrictions, and expensive products never work? Um, as a society, we're con continuously falling victim to that quick fix and there's no quick fix like we know that you've probably tried a diet and a fat exercise program that you can't stick to and that doesn't work and 
and when it doesn't work and when, when we don't hit our weight loss goals, we don't hit our goal, we feel crappy, we feel like we failed, we feel awful about ourselves, we quit all, we quit everything and then we binge eat. <laughs> so it just goes in reverse. Every diet just takes you in reverse. It creates food fear and guilt. Food should be fun. You should love food. You're a runner. Food is what fuels your body to burn more fat. It, it fuels your body for your runs to feel energized and we shouldn't shouldn't be something that you waste your time on feeling guilty and you're fearful of and I know that that is a massive problem out there. I have been there, trust me. Um, diets and gimmicks and shakes and pills don't teach you anything about food. They don't teach you anything about what it feels like to be hungry and how to satisfy that hunger and take care of that, right? They don't teach you anything about how how to adjust, how to how to eat properly. And when you deprive your body of nutrition, of the nutrition it needs, it's keeping track and it's gonna want that back and it's gonna want that back in other cravings and you're not gonna be able to stop them. So um, once you go off that so-called diet, your body knows and you're just gonna, willpower is no match for you, right? You know that about diets. That's why diets don't work for the long term, not to, manage, manage, not to mention the damage that can be done by overly restrictive diets. Any restrictive diet is just gonna have a yo-yo effect and you know that. Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Food is powerful and um, I ignored that for a long time. I had my own eating issues, of course, as most women do. Um, and when I learned to use food as fuel, to appreciate it, to respect it, to grow a relationship with food and what it does for me, um, my life changed. My metabolism changed. My physique changed. My my wasted time on 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 worrying about food changed. It opened up more time in my life. It was awesome. Um, so secret number two. How do you increase your metabolism? Um, you have to push your limits. You have to build muscle and increase to increase your metabolism, and then you're going to be burning, burning calories, burning food. You're going to feel your body get hungry when you can tune into it. You're not on a diet. You're learning to feed it properly, and you're going to become a calorie burning machine <laughs> when you build muscle. And runners, we need to build muscle. Running long, slow distances is not going to do this for you. Um, we need to be shifting that focus. Runners, we hate doing strength work. I know that about you, I get that. But when I started doing very strategic hit style workouts, my hunger changed, my body physique changed, my running changed, my health changed. Um, because when you're doing those high intensity interval workouts, you're breaking your muscles down and your body is hungry. It needs food to build that up and muscles what burns calories. So you want muscle. That's what's gonna give you that lean, sexy physique, right? That's so cool right now. Everybody wants um, strong as the new skinny, right? So it's awesome. So runners, we can do this. We can do high intensity interval training workouts. They do not need to be complex. The beautiful thing about them is they take less than 30 minutes. They can take 20 minutes most days of the week and you're gonna see a massive difference in your hunger and in your body and in your running in the long term. Uh, the more muscles you have, the stronger you are, the more calories you burn at rest, even after your workout is done, which is super cool. When I started adding HIIT workouts to my run training, I got hungry. I tuned into my nutrition even higher. And that's actually when I started taking care of my nutrition because I was hungry and I couldn't just keep eating everything. Like my body actually wanted good food because it was burning good. It was burning so many calories. Um, and my running surprisingly got stronger. I'm fitter and faster and stronger than I ever was before kids because I do hit training every week at least twice. Um, and then I still do my long runs, which I love for the sanity of them. So what are runner specific HIIT workouts? They're circuit workouts that are multi-joint. So you, it's not just doing a bicep curl sitting there. It's doing um, a wall push up, an incline push up, an incline, um, an incline mountain climber, squats, lunges, um, skips, skaters, side planks, high knees, butt kicks, um, all that kind of body weight stuff that's on your feet, um, body weight functional stuff amazing workout you don't need any equipment you don't need a gym you don't need anything crazy you just need to know the basics of kind of like 10 exercises and they can be made easier and as you get stronger you make them harder you take that squat you make it a jump squat you make it a 90 degree turn squat that kind of thing amazing amazing workouts and very functional for runners because runners we need to get strong and runners love to skip these, right? And then you get injured because your body's not strong enough to handle the distances. Hill sprints, interval workouts on a track or around the block and stuff, those are great hit style 
workouts that are gonna burn calories and build muscle. Um, if you're a beginner, you don't wanna be running a ton of intervals, doing hill work, because you're gonna increase uh, your, your risk of injury because you don't have the fitness base yet. But for those of you who are up to bigger distances who aren't beginner runners, throw some speed work into your training, 400 meter sprints, 400 meters of rest, repeat that eight times. There's all kinds of things, run up and down a hill 10 times, amazing speed work, amazing muscle building, and you are going to become a faster runner. Awesome. They, you know, hit workouts are for all levels, the basic squats, lunges, whatever. That stuff is a key component of every single quality run training program out there. Hit workouts, core workouts are important, critical pieces of all of my training programs in the training academy, and I give you the exact workout to do every week, so you don't have to think about it. Uh, that's something that's really lacking in a lot of the free programs. It tells you to cross train, or it doesn't tell you to cross train, it tells you to do nothing, so you don't know what to do, and you're just running and running and running, and getting injured, never getting stronger, and your body physique is never changing, right runners? Um, so that's really important. Muscles are broken down in the gym, fed in the kitchen, and built in bed. So strategy number three, food to curb cravings. You eat real food and you eat it often. You know, if you're skipping meals and not eating balanced and, and you're going to have sugar cravings, right? Um, the number one strategy to curb those sugar cravings is to eat real food and eat it real often. You're gonna hear me say that over and over if you follow me. Um, dieting is risky for runners. Restricting calories or avoiding entire macronutrients like carbs is a mistake when you're in training. Your body needs all that stuff. Instead of focusing on eating minimally, instead I want you to focus on eating minimally processed nutrient dense food. I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not giving you specific advice, I'm just saying eat real food, your body wants real food. And under eating in runners is just as critical as overeating or eating too much of the wrong stuff. I don't know how many years I went around foraging off my kids' plates, right? Crumbs of toast, um, toast crusts with a little bit of jam on them and leftover spaghetti and like right like and you never get hungry when you do that you also never feed your body so you're probably under eating how about skipping meals i'm always skipping meals like i feed the kids breakfast i pack their lunches i get them out the door i leave with nothing i grab coffee your body's not going to function that way you're not going to build muscle if you're not eating food you need to eat food you need to prioritize yourself and eat good food just like anybody else and when i when i started um, improving my nutrition, it started with breakfast. I started making sure I never left the house without two hard-boiled hard eggs, whole wheat toast, and coconut oil. I feel like that kind of changed my life because I started eating breakfast, which set me up for the day. I started eating more protein, and I started eating more healthy fats, and that, like, it really, like, and then I started doing the HIIT workouts, and it really kick-started everything. Um, everything after kids when I was feeling really crappy and no energy and couldn't run very fast and was feeling really crappy. So that, that's a really helpful tip. Uh, real food, it's just consuming food in its most natural state. You know, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. I don't like the term clean eating because there's no dirty eating or bad eating. Like throw all that away. It's just eat real food, love it. Usually the food that makes you feel good is the real food. Like eating a bag of chips doesn't make me feel good. We know that and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't feel bad about that or guilty of that. Just be mindful of it. You eat chips, who cares? <laughs> like, hope you enjoy them, right? If you enjoy them, who cares? But 80% of the time, as much as you can, especially when you're in training, know that, that it's a lifestyle approach to food, eating real food, and it's going to help you achieve your health goals, your well-being, and a lean physique if that's what your goal is. So we're talking fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins. Most women don't eat enough protein. Um, we're talking eggs. Um, lean cuts of skinless chicken, turkey breast, lean beef, tuna, salmon, um, unhealth or sorry, healthy fats, avocados, coconut oils, nut butters. We're gonna help you stabilize your blood sugar and help keep you feeling full between the healthy fats and the proteins. It's really great as well. Helps to curb those sugar cravings when you when you're eating more nutrient dense food. You don't feel like you're missing stuff, and when you feel like you're missing food, you want sugar, right? Um, there was a time where I thought I never could go without eating like a loaf of bread all day long, right? That's all I used to eat is toast because that, my body just craved it, right? I just needed something and I wasn't feeding myself fats, not avocados, nuts, seeds. We need that stuff. When you, you, when you eat fat and protein, you're going to burn more calories, burn more food. 
Um, water. We all need to be drinking a lot more water. So many people are dehydrated. It's very simple. Just keep your water with you. I love adding essential oils, doTERRA essential oils, grapefruit, um, lime, wild orange, lemon. They're, they're easy on your teeth, which is what I love about the doTERRA oils. They come cold pressed from the rind, so they're not going to eat the enamel off your teeth, and you can drink flavorful water all day, totally natural. I uh, love that if you don't have any yet and you want to get some, just message me or comment below. Let's get you hooked up with doTERRA because it's awesome. Um, good carbs for runners. I did, again, I'm not a nutritionist. I didn't create this. I didn't make this up. I got this from a nutritionist friend. Good carbs for runners. Quinoa, beans, lentils, chickpeas, sweet potatoes, all veggies, fruits, bananas, and dates are great for sweeteners. Um, they're great carbs for you before or after run, right? Uh, honey, maple syrup, natural sweeteners as well if you're looking to sweeten up a smoothie or something. Um, strategy number three, oh, we're still talking about strategy number three. Um, just a few kind of philosophies I have around eating that are, might be helpful for you as well. Eat breakfast within an hour of waking. Like I said, I love eating breakfast. It sets me up for the day as long as it's balanced with that protein, that healthy fat. Um, and I always eat bread. I always eat bread for breakfast. Um, unless you have problems. Again, I'm not recommending anything for you. You need to tune into what works best for you based on your dietary restrictions and uh, rules. Um, start your morning with a glass of water again, room temperature, lemon water. Awesome way to start the day, just start that hydration right from the beginning. Eat every two to four hours. Again, if you're skipping meals, your body goes into that starvation mode, it's gonna hold on to stuff, you're gonna crave that sugar. Really try hard to eat something balanced every two to four hours. Um, Tune into what works for you, tune into what doesn't work for you. What works for me is not gonna work for you, it's not gonna work for her, but learn what makes you feel good and what makes you feel crappy and try and bridge that gap and feel good about your choices. Um, and don't feel bad about, about your bad choices because who cares, you know what? I try to eat real food about 80% of the time and the rest of the time, I love wine, I love chocolate, I love cookies, I love salty chips, like my family bought a bag of that, what is it, the party mix? I just love that stuff. <laughs> Um, focus on nutrient dense foods, smoothies. I love smoothies. I've gotten quite addicted to green power smoothies. I throw sp spinach and kale and all kinds of stuff in there and I just, it's great um, for breakfast sometimes because it's easy to digest. If you're not really feeling up for a full on breakfast in the morning, it's great after a workout, great after a long run, right after a long run, it's easy to digest. I know after 33 kilometers, when I ate hot dogs with my kids as a recovery meal, it didn't sit very well. I really wish I could have had a power smoothie, but they're so excited to cook me hot dogs. <laughs> uh, don't deprive yourself. You know what? It's not worth it. Who cares? Life is about enjoying and having fun, and we waste way too much time worrying about food. Protein, protein, protein. Uh, repair, build muscle tissue after a challenging workout, between workouts. I can't say how important that is. Healthy fats, too. They're going to keep you full and satisfied. Okay. Uh, number four, stress and sleep are sabotaging your efforts. If you want to get fit, you got to manage your stress and you got to get some sleep. Um, I know that I didn't sleep for four years after my kids and it was evident. Like, it was really hard to do anything and I was, I was aware of that. So you can't expect yourself. You can't be so hard on yourself if you're not sleeping. You can't, you can't do a lot. You can't get the training effect that you're working so hard for. So that's a good time to kind of pull back and to focus on getting some sleep, to focus on taking care of your stress because when you do that, you're going to manage those cortisol levels and then you're going to allow yourself to get more of a training effect when you focus on that stuff first. Oftentimes we focus on the training and the dieting. We wonder why it's not working. Well, we're not sleeping and we're massively stressed and then we're frustrated because the workout's not working. So it's like this negative stress cycle. Whereas if you approach your running with intention, with how is this workout gonna make me feel today, regardless of the weight loss, regardless of the, the records and the times and the paces, um, you're gonna help manage that stress way better, right? Because the body will react to training as a form of stress. And I see this so often in people when I just wanna say, just run because you love it, run for the freedom, run for how it feels and the energy it brings to you. Allow it to manage your stress, not create more stress in your life. And when you, when you have that stress, your cortisol levels get elevated and when they're high all the time, your body's gonna store fat, or especially around that midsection, it's really hard to, to work around that, okay? So when you're chronically stressed, you're not gonna get results. Managing stress and busyness is so important. Um, 
when stress levels spike, you need to back off of your training a little bit. And that's so hard for people. Injuries are the worst, right? We get injured and then we get super stressed and like even more worried. You need to back off. You need to nourish your body with good food, lots of sleep, a little extra self-love during these times. You know, running, training falls down your priority list. The rest of it goes up until you can get through that and run without the stress. And then of course sleep, like if you're not sleeping, you're slowing your metabolism, you're gonna experience sugar cravings, you're gonna get sick often, and you're gonna feel like you just have lost all control. And as moms, this is so critical because we don't sleep for years. We don't, some of us don't sleep for five, six, seven, eight years, you guys, like, that's crazy. And then we throw training on top of it. So like, high five to you guys out there. Give those ladies a high five who are still in those years with little kids and just, Please be patient on yourself. You will get there. Just enjoy where you're at and try and create your own sleep routine because we know we create sleep routines for kids, but we don't create them for ourselves, right? We're up late, we're drinking wine, we're on Facebook, we're on the internet. Just try and give yourself some sleep. If you're really, really unhappy with your health, you're really unhappy with your progress, if you can get some sleep, you might that might be the key that you need to push yourself forward. Um, I love essential oils as part of my sleep routine. Cedarwood, frankincense, lavender. Um, I balance are just great blends. I love in a diffuser. I'm um, in a roller bottle. I keep by my bed. I put on my pillow. I just it's it's restful. It's calming. It's very zen, and it helps me get some sleep and improve that sleep. If again, if you need DoTerra, let me know. I love this stuff. I'll talk about it all day with you if you want. Um, and then strategy number five, the secret, you guys, is is plan your meals, your workouts, and your life. If you schedule time to plan your meals, plan your workouts, you are going to create more structure in your life and more structure in your life gives you more freedom. And I'm sure you've experienced that, right? The weeks that you're planned, you got your food organized, like the week goes smoother, you eat better, you're not as rushed, you feel more in control. The weeks that you don't are out of control. That's why I'm always on a running program. I never sign up for a race, I never, I never get too strict about it, but I like to have my training plan. I like to be in training for something because it gives me structure. If I don't even have structure to my workouts, I don't get out. I don't enjoy them. I don't get progress because I'm just kind of doing this and doing that. Like I like to feel progress in my running. So um, same thing for food, for workouts. Like If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail and you're going to struggle. So if you can get organized and structured, you are going to have good food on you so you're not making those bad choices. You're gonna have food on you so you're not um, scrambling for dinner eating pizza with everybody, which is great some nights, but it's just not great every night when you just aren't planned, right? When you set up structure to your life, how you eat, how you prep, when you exercise, what exact workouts you will do to get to your goals, and you stick to the pre-made schedule and plan, you don't need more motivation. It's not motivation that you need. It comes down to habit and just taking action. And these are basic healthy habits. No rocket science, no gimmicks, no tricks and no diets, right? Just structure. And I know I'm, I'm like a hippie at heart. I just like to go with the flow and do whatever. Um, and then I, I either eat crappy, skip my workouts, don't feel fulfilled in my workouts, or I spend a load of money going out for dinner every day, which I would prefer to do, but I can't afford to go for dinner like I like to every day. <laughs> um, so I have to have structure, I have to have plan, I have to like be rigorous about it. Um, just keeps me organized. So where are you? If you're one of those people out there who told me your health was a one or a two out of 10, where are you? What are you struggling with? What is not working for you? You know, ask yourself how your current eating habits or your workout routine are working for you or aren't working for you. Um, and think about your actions and your behavior choices because yes, we do have choice. We do, we do have control, some control. Yes, you can't get out for a long run every day. Yes, you don't have much time, but if you can implement some, some strategies, some plans, some structure, you can be prepared. Um, you're gonna implement even just small changes like drinking water it can have a massive change. It can be what you need to get started, right? Um, what's holding you back? So oftentimes what's holding you back in your health and your fitness isn't the no time, it isn't everything else going on, it's actually you, it's fear, it's low self-confidence, it's negative self-talk, it's doubt, it's guilt when you slip up, right? I know that that's, that's such a common feeling out there. Again, it's, um, you know, I want you to ask yourself, like, what actions do you need to take or stop doing to achieve your goals and what 
are your goals realistic? Is training for half marathon what you need right now? Um, what is your step-by-step -step plan to achieve your goals? Do you have a plan in your fitness and in your health to help you get where you want to go, to help you feel what you want to feel? Who is your support system? Who's holding you accountable? We're not meant to do this alone, yet we do, yet we think we do. Um, we think we need to do it alone and, and, and we're not. That's why I have the training academy. I need the training academy as much as everybody else needs the training academy. Otherwise, I'd be alone. I don't want you guys to be alone. I don't want to be alone. So my bonus tip, you guys, so that you can get fit even if you're busy, so you can feel better when you're a busy mom, is that to be successful, you've got to start by shifting your mindset. You can't change anything else until you change your mindset. You have to meet yourself where you're at, appreciate your stress, appreciate your sleep. You need to view exercise and healthy eating positively as something you look forward to, not as a stress in your life or as punishment, right? Um, you must plan for bad days and, and for good days and, and for tough weeks when kids get sick and not be feel guilty um, about those times because it's, I always tell people it's not a matter of if you have a bad week, it's a matter of when and, and what you're going to do when those challenges come and how you're going to pick yourself back up. Uh, you must, must know, understand, appreciate that it takes time to implement health change and to feel better. Consistent effort, effort, bad days, patience, persistence. Like we expect health change and we expect running to 5k or 10k or 10k to be like a linear course, right? But it's never a linear course. It's like a, some days are good, some days are bad. And, and it's like that for all of us. Like this isn't easy for me. I had really really hard years. Even now, I'm super busy. I didn't get out for my run on the weekend. I was supposed to do 12K and I didn't go. I can either beat myself up over that, get super upset and quit, or I can say, oh well, I'll just pick up my schedule and keep going, or adjust my schedule and do what I need to do. It happens and it's okay and we just can't beat ourselves up about it, okay? We gotta be nice to ourselves. Um, most importantly, we need to know why, why any of this matters. Why does it matter that you run? Why does it matter that you feel good in your body? Why does it matter that you become strong physically and strong emotionally? Why does any of that matter to you? You know, you gotta be very in tune with that. And I think that's, those are my secrets to success is my mindset. I can get through anything because I have a very strong mindset, very flexible really do that stuff and that is what I train the women in the running moms Academy to be strong runners and strong women from a mindset perspective and so how do you join the running moms training Academy because it is open right now until Wednesday and then it's closed and I want you in it I want you improving your health from 1 to 2 and I want your health going to 8 to 9 to 10 I want you feeling amazing in your body I want you feeling strong I want you feeling confident I want you loving life and loving food and loving exercise and loving your body and yourself and feeling sexy okay that's what i want for you guys and i really truly believe when you learn to run you learn to shift your mindset and you learn to prioritize yourself you can get there and that is how i train you guys so yes i'm going to give you guys if you want a 12-week training program to 5k 10k 21k complete with hit workouts core workouts uh, endurance training speed work i'm going to give you meal ideas, recipes, plans, all of that stuff. But more importantly, over the next three months, we are focusing on mindset as part of our training. So yes, you're gonna keep putting in the work. You're gonna keep taking care of yourself because it all starts with movement. Even 10 minutes of movement is going to make you feel happy instantly. And who doesn't wanna feel happy instantly? But it takes more than that. So we are gonna be going through the following topics over the next weeks. Every week, every two weeks, I'm gonna be taking out a new topic. We're gonna to have live coaching calls. We're gonna have conversations in the group. And we're gonna dig into the stuff, you guys. We're gonna talk about why it's not about, it's not just about diet and exercise, which is what, when we wanna feel better, that's what we go to, right? We go to food and exercise, and then it doesn't work, and we quit, and we start over again. We need to start thinking differently. We need to dig into mindset. We're going to talk goal setting, prioritizing, taking care of you and how to adjust your expectations of yourself so you can have massive success. We're going to talk about what lights you up and how to create a vision for your life. We're going to do a vision board together because when you write this stuff down, it opens up your brain and it opens up the universe and the energies to allow you to bring in the people and the opportunities that you need to create change and, um, and positivity in your life. We were talking about how and why to take the goal focus off of fat loss. We all want to weight loss. That's why we start running, but we're going to work on taking, taking 
um, the focus off of fat loss and what, and we're gonna talk about what other important things, are, what other things are more important to focus on so that you can eventually get there. But if you're always focusing on the weight loss, like it's gonna feel like a constant gap all the time that you are gonna feel um, like you're underperforming. And I want you to focus on today and that's what we're gonna work on. We're gonna learn to set intentions and not goals around paces, miles and races. More running does not make you a better runner. I'm gonna repeat that. More running does not make you a better runner. Um, I'm gonna train you guys to be more mindful and take a more mindful approach to sustainable running for the long term. Because that is the goal. If you approach running with some intelligence and some mindfulness, it is going to reward you for a long time. We're gonna talk about the difference between the owl and the wow brain, which one you have, and how you can use this knowledge to push past your barriers. We're gonna be talking about why running is self-care and why you need to push into it even during your busiest and your most stressful times. Because often what do we do when we get stressed, we get busy, we pull away from our self-care, we, we put off our exercise and I'm gonna challenge you to not do that, to actually focus on your exercise, focus on yourself when times are busiest and most stressful because it'll help you get through. We're gonna do seven simple steps to enhancing your self-care and how to prioritize it without guilt or sacrifice. Uh, we're gonna talk about why your type A personality or your runner's brain attitude is holding you back and how you can begin to run more mindfully for healthier, stronger running. Uh, we're gonna talk about how your own inner bully and your own inner negativity is sabotaging your best efforts. And um, we're gonna talk about how to understand food as fuel for a healthy body and a happy mind and how to cultivate a better relationship with food that doesn't leave you feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or hungry. No dieting, no pills, no tricks. Um, just you loving food and having it not power you. We're gonna talk about essential oils as a secret weapon for emotional health. Not weight loss, for emotional health because they're fun and they, they really do have the power to make you happy. Choose your oil, choose your, choose your mood by your oil on the days that you can't run, because we can't run every day, right? We need something else in our back pocket that's gonna help us manage our mood and our emotions. So I'm gonna post the link below if you wanna join the Academy. Remember, it's only open until Wednesday. If you sign up today, I've got a ton of bonuses for you that are gonna be really helpful to get you up and running. Bonus number one is you're gonna get access to the Good Running Form Naturally coaching series. It's gonna talk you from head to toe on how you can improve your running form um, so that you can run better instantly, pretty much. Uh, we never, t those apps don't talk about running form. When you're watching all those other, so all those uh, running groups, they don't talk about form, and I see form errors all the time. They're holding you back. I want you guys running strong and with good form. It's key. Uh, you're gonna get running postpartum. You're gonna get four weeks of core and strength focused workouts if you are not up, because you shouldn't be running earlier than four to six months postpartum so if you want to join this group and you're under that you're going to still get the four week core and strength series as long as you're cleared for exercise for your MD because I don't want you running I want you focusing on your strength connecting to your core it's also good for you if you're just trying to get up and running but you're not strong enough yet everybody who wants to get running who hasn't been running should spend four to twelve weeks focusing on strength and good core connection very important so you're going to get access to that that exercise sequence four weeks of it uh, you're going to get the Meal Planning Masterclass with Bianca Osborne, who's a professionally trained private chef, holistic, uh, certified holistic nutritionist, and meal planning educator, who's going to teach you the basics of how to be a better cook by mastering the art of meal planning and cooking fundamentals so that you can enjoy delicious meals without spending hours in the kitchen. Perfect for me. I don't want to spend hours in the kitchen. It's a good um, masterclass with Bianca that you're going to get access to. You're also going to get access to the exclusive interview I did with Melissa Bufanos, who's a sports nutritionist, and she talks to us and she's co-created um, an e-guide with me called Running on Real Food, and the interviews on nutrition for weight loss and performance with some really good tips that you can just take away and implement instantly into your life. And you're also going to get my favorite smoothie guide full of power pack recipes for running moms on the go. I love smoothies. I think they're perfect for us. Um, full of power, full of energy, especially post-workout. Um, you guys are going to get access to all of that if you register today. Again, it's only open until Wednesday and then it, the Running Moms Academy is closed. I don't think there's any other run training program at all, even remotely close to the community that we've built with Running Moms, the, the training that you get, the HIIT workouts, the core workouts, the endurance programs, and the mindset training, the healthy habit training that goes along with that, um, is going to set you up for some massive health success. 
and I would love if you joined. So I will post the link below or please feel free to message me if you have questions. Um, and again, you're gonna get in this group and you're gonna get out of this group what you put in. So every week you're gonna get your email, you're gonna have access to the Training Academy Facebook group. If you're in there and you're sharing and you're commenting, you're opening discussions with other people and you're taking action and you're not sitting back and, 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 and being afraid, um, we're, we're super supportive and we are there for you. You can message me anytime. I love helping you guys through. Let me know if you're struggling. Let me know where you're at. Let's get you connected. Let's get you set up. Let's get you feeling amazing. Let's get you feeling strong and confident so that you can handle life, right? Like we have a lot of life going on, um, but we need to take care of ourselves, moms, so that we can take care of everything else. And I know you have a lot of stuff going on out there because I've been there. And uh, I know, I know how it feels. I'm here to support you guys. Thanks for listening. That was way longer than I'd anticipated. If you're still here, if you're still listening, I know you want more. And I, uh, I hope that you join us. I would love to welcome you in to the Academy. Have an awesome day.